Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 203, first one of 2021. Uh, you're starting off exciting, I guess we'll say that. Uh, this meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, or are watching it in the future. Uh, very happy to have you. Let's see, what are we going to talk about? Um, oh, by the way, if you're here, say hi in the comments. We always like to know who's watching, who's keeping up with us on the day-to-day. -day. Uh, what are we doing today? We're going to do triage, and then, as always, we'll leave it open for questions and comments if there are other things to talk about. Sean added a couple extra um, items to be triaged, so I want to make sure that we get through them all. So let's go jump straight into triage. Bob, you ready? I'm ready. Let's see. All right. So we're going to start with, uh, I guess we'll start with the top, language cleanup. I feel like this has been around for a bit. Oh, yeah. This is one of our phantom bugs. Phantom bug. Oh, it was not marked in issues? Or, yeah. I mean, it was um, not tracked by the no-label? Show up on the query. Yes. Thank you. Um, great. So we need Didn't to... Didn't we triage this last time? I feel like we did. <laughs> I feel like we talked about it. Um, we talked about, yeah, because we talked about standard sequences and what we weren't probably going to do any of that in Wix 4 at this point in time, um, just given the amount of other stuff going on. Are you accusing me of not writing stuff down and being a proper scribe? Um, I hope not, because... Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> All right, so you're saying we didn't cover this one. We covered something like No, it. we did. We did. Oh, okay. I, I know. I remember the discussion about the sequence elements. Okay. So Vaguely. I, I mean, it could have been in my head. But. I don't know what else we're going to do with this issue. Do we just close it, make it go away now that source is done? Or well, I was is source not done? That, I was complaining that there's a lot of deprecated stuff in the XSD that so we, didn't have a deprecation warning in 3, I guess, because that's what Bob said he had cleaned up already. Oh, I see. So things well, that are... Are you talking about the XSD? Or the compiler. I went through. Uh, I, so when I did my work on this, actually, probably the other issue that did show up in the query, uh, I worked off of the compiler actually throwing deprecation warnings. Yeah. So there's stuff in the XSD that's marked as there's a deprecated attribute in the XSD that there's multiple elements, and I brought up the UX element was a good example of that, where the compiler is still compiling that element. So it wasn't. So it was marked deprecated in the XSD, but not in the compiler. I guess so. If you didn't uh, pull it out. Uh, it's, I suppose possible. I missed it as well. But um, yeah, we can keep it open, and I can take it to uh, do another pass. Based on the XSD, as opposed to the source code. No, the XSD is. It, you know, it, I moved all the XSDs to the doc repo. Yep. And they're all out of date. They all need a yeah. You know, need dedicated work. pass. Yep. Um. I I don't want I don't want this issue to be that. Okay. Because it's assigned to me. Huh. Oh wait, no, it's not. Not yet. Not yet. Um. <laughs> So I will take this bug to go scrolling for, for more deprecated stuff. Now, the truth is, I mean, I'll take a look at UX, and I'll add that you know, to the list. Um, but I'm not aware of, of anything else unless there's, um, you know, there, there are deprecation warnings that I missed. So, you know, I'll take a look for UX, certainly, and another pass for um, for stuff that's explicitly deprecated um, in case I miss some. And then I would say that after that, we should just open new issues for whatever's remaining. Yeah. Like hopefully your pass catches it, and if we find something else, just open an issue for that particular thing to fix it. Because it, it may also be that we need to go and add a deprecation to Wix 3 so that... If you 314. go to 314, so that yeah. if you go through the step, you get that, you're like, oh, this was deprecated, and that's why, you know, hopefully the message says use this instead. It's hopefully what it says, generally. In three. Yep. Cool. All right, so this 
one, I think, will go away then. Shortly. Excellent. Uh, rollback boundary is always discarded when at the beginning of the chain. Um, you skipped ears. What? Oh, weird. Oh, it went away and my I refreshed and it. Okay. Wait. Oh, I guess that. Okay, never mind. Um, Non-vital roll boundary. Non-vital rollback boundary doesn't stop on failing package. Um, you guys were talking about this, right? Yeah. So what's the what? What's going on here? Is that well, non-vital weren't skipping the boundaries? Yeah, like according to the documentation, and the code was kind of trying to do it, where mm -hmm. if the package fails inside of a rollback boundary that's not vital. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to roll back to the rollback boundary and continue execution at the next rollback boundary. Right. That sounds right. And it's just but not working properly. It's That's not what's happening. Okay. I don't know how popular rollback boundaries are in the end. Apparently not that popular, at least non-vital ones. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm terribly confused about the concept of a of vitality in a rollback boundary. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember where this came from, and it's not coming to me of what was the motivation for this requirement. I always. Uh, my memory of rollback boundary was like in a, in a big product like Visual Studio, where if you know package 100 failed, you didn't want to you know try to roll back the previous 99 if it was a transient error or or something that the user could could you know fix on their own. Well, it's like the, uh, additive content, right? It's like additive content. The app is working, but your additive content isn't. Let's not remove the app for the fact that additive content didn't get, you know, saw, uh, installed the first time around. And it, and it did come that the the vital ones came from Visual Studio. I'm trying to remember where non the concept of a non-vital rollback package came from. What motivated that? Well, that's yeah, that's my confusion. A rollback boundary to you know as a hard stop. To a rollback for, you know, app versus additive kind of makes sense, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But That's if it's actually, point. yeah, 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 that makes sense, kind of. Um, but I'm I'm confused then about package vitality versus rollback boundary vitality. I'm I'm like, if it's really optional, wouldn't wouldn't you make the package non-vital? Sorry, I, I guess it's philosophical whining. I'm just trying to remember what drove this feature. Because the, the rollback boundary exists for the exact scenario that you listed, and I just don't remember why the non-vital ones exist. And it's just, it bugs me that it's not coming back to me. I guess it it makes it easier. Like if you have a rollback boundary containing a lot of packages, and you don't really care about any of them, you can just set no on the rollback boundary, and then the rest of them can be technically vital. But the, because of the rollback boundary being non-vital, it won't actually affect. It won't actually stop the installation. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call rollback boundaries checkpoints from now on because that's the only thing that makes sense to me. A boundary isn't vital or not. It's whether that checkpoint, that group of packages, is vital or not. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, good. It helps my brain to think of it that way. I mean, we should call them installation checkpoints, chain checkpoints, but yeah. Um, Anyway, um, so this is now tracking the – 
Yeah, this, this, yeah. Where do you want this to go, Sean? Like, I don't think we should take any of these fixes in three. Like, if it's been broken for this long, yeah, not, no, we're not taking <laughs> This we're is taking opening it. up a whole can of worms fixing right. this. So. Yeah, it'd have to be four. <laughs> yeah, it's four. Are we taking it four? I mean. I mean, he already. He tried to fix it already in his, uh, in his own fork. And I'm going to be needing to fix other things anyway. <laughs> All right. So I guess we're going to keep it, but we're going to put it in 4.0. Yeah. And revisit it when revisiting all the things around, I assume, around ARP and such, because it's all kind of, well, it's all just the rollback and final state of the bundle when things go wrong in the end. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. 4.0. But I don't know that it has to be a preview zero if we've been living with the broken bug for that long. All right. It 4 has to be in a in a dot minor. It doesn't have to be 4.0 personally. It definitely doesn't have to be in preview zero. Yeah, as long as the behavior hasn't changed. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. All right. Rollback boundary is always discarded when at the beginning of the chain. Yes. The issue here is that the warning doesn't happen anymore. No, you can. This is basically me trying to reproduce the previous issue. Uh huh. <laughs> if you want the f initial rollback boundary to be non vital, you could do that in V3, but you can't do that in V4 anymore because it throws yours away and uses the default, which is vital. Oh, weird. Oh, gosh. What is a non... All right, wait, wait, wait. So what does a non-vital rollback boundary do at the beginning of the chain? Well, it just means any of the packages inside of that rollback boundary won't cause the installation to fail. It, it'll roll back to the rollback boundary and then it'll proceed execution Skip. at the next rollback boundary. Right. You go back and then you jump to the next checkpoint, as to use Bob's terminology. And you could put, oh, so you can't put one at the beginning anymore. I see. Okay. All right. So if non-vital, then you shouldn't discard this. All right. So this basically needs to be pivot on whether the rollback boundary is vital or not. I mean... We added the MSI transaction as well, so there's really no reason you shouldn't just discard the rollback boundary at the beginning of the chain just because it's, cause it's not the same as the default one, because you'd be forced to specify the ID as well. So I'm not sure why we would ever take the default one over the one that the user specified. Is it the, if you put two vital rollback boundaries at the beginning, isn't that redundant? No, oh, I didn't. I haven't tried that. But no, I mean, if you put a rollback boundary at the beginning of the a a, a vital rollback boundary at the beginning of the chain, isn't that redundant? Not if you want it to be an MSI transaction. Rollback boundaries start MSI transactions. That's Maybe how that's you... a better idea. Um, rollback boundary checkpoint. We're trying to to identify transactions here. So rollback at the at the X uh, when a rollback boundary is encountered, that's like committing a transaction. Yes. Well, it's like beginning a transaction. And committing the previous one, starting a new one. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It, it does so that, both operations, it, which is why putting one at the very beginning is where I'm struggling. Isn't? Mm, can't you say that there's always an implicit begin transaction? There is. There's an implicit rollback boundary at the very beginning. And right. I'm trying to get to Sean saying there's some value in creating your own. Yeah, if you want the initial transaction to be an MSI transaction, then you have to be able to author the rollback boundary. And essentially, if we say rollback boundary vital equals no, is that saying 
don't do a transaction? No, it says do a transaction, but if that fails, if that transaction fails, burn doesn't fail. Sorry, it's it's like saying do a transaction that quote unquote always succeeds. Yes. Okay. All right. That that the result is ignored. Do a transaction that and whose result, whether successful or rolled back, is ignored. Well, in that case, wouldn't vital equals no? Wouldn't a rollback boundary at the beginning of a chain saying vital equals no? be something legitimate yes and that's i mean that's sean's point which makes sense to me um yeah. the one that i'm struggling with is the rollback the the vital rollback that but if it's vital and they want it to be an msi transaction <laughs> the msi transaction is a separate attribute yeah i forget i've noticed that way that's back when new. i forgot that's... isn't it yeah, yeah it's new in four uh, okay that's where I'm struggling. Okay, that's what I'm missing is that the MSI transaction is new on the on the rollback boundary. Um, we shouldn't call these rollback boundaries anymore. We should just call them <laughs> sub transactions, right? Or essentially, Something, yeah. I mean, you can't call it checkpoint because it also is, you know, declaring that there is a transaction going forward. Yeah, but then you have to. How do you declare the end? The next one, the next checkpoint. That's yeah. That's this is interesting. Well, yeah, checkpoint. Check. Uh, yeah, checkpoints. Checkpoint only works if you look backwards, or you know, yeah, you're talking yeah. backwards. As does rollback boundary. Rollback boundary is kind of right. looks backwards too. Um, but when you put the transaction, the MSI transaction, now you're looking forward. Right. And that's where I'm. No, I'm, that's where I'm confused. We, it, it always had this confusing aspect where the rollback boundary consisted of the packages that were declared after it. But during execution, rollback would happen until it worked backward towards and would stop on the boundary. So there's, it's always had this forward aspect of containing all the packages and the backwards aspect during execution. Yeah. <sighs> Cause it's, yeah, because it operates in the rollback path. <laughs> Which is why when you're going backwards, you encounter it after the packages. Um, Should we consider breaking them up? And having like begin and end transactions in the chain. Well, I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm wondering if the um, transaction, the the statement of if you want an MSI transaction should not be on the rollback boundary. It should instead be on a start MSI transaction or something. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. not. I'm not sure that's the right thing to do either. But that then says all of this stuff. Everything after this point is part of this MSI transaction. It also is complicated by the fact that right now I don't think, and I could be, actually I, I should ask the question, if you have a rollback boundary that you've set as an MSI transaction, can you put an XE package in there? Today you can. Okay. Then I worry that we're overloading rollback boundary a bit. Yeah, I and wonder. And we probably we shouldn't allow MSI transaction in, in the chain when an MSI transaction is active. We probably should not allow other package types, even if they. Oof. They might work fine, but of course, an XE package. The order's going to be really weird, right? I mean, the order's yeah. not whatever you put in there, because the MSI transaction will be failed. Uh, it's interesting. If the XE fails, then the MSI is going The order is just wacky if you mix and match them. Um, well, if, if you want to separate the functionality out of the rollback boundary, that's going to make the MSI transaction stuff a lot harder. Yeah, no, I I was just thinking, and, and it, I don't. As I was thinking through it more, I'm I'm 
kind of coming around to where you're at with the rollback boundaries just have to they look forward so we need to think about them looking forward which makes me think more and more that we should name them you know a transaction or sub transaction if we want to you know make the chain seem like it um, nested transaction I mean whatever we want to whatever terminology we want to use there to because you're right they especially this way you need to look at them more going forward which also would do a better job of explaining their vitality Right. If you have a non-vital right. sub-transaction, you're like, oh, well, then if this fails, burn doesn't fail. Yeah. Have a nice day. And you're like, well, that makes sense. And the trick then is that every time you hit this element, sub-transaction, that's currently named rollback boundary or whatever we name it, um, when you hit it, that's how you have boundaries. And there is implicitly a boundary at the beginning and the end of your package. Um Can you put the tra MSI transaction on the chain? Not today. You have to use a rollback boundary to do it. Yeah. All right, so I... I'm inclined to say that we should rename rollback boundary to better denote its nested transaction behavior. Um, and that will clean up the vital problem, questionable problem. And it will also make it natural that if you want to declare an MSI transaction, well then of course you'll have to define a subtransaction. Um, I would also probably be a good idea if we don't let you put Xs nested inside that subtransaction, or to sorry to mix and match Windows installer packages with other packages inside that. So I think that's just going to get wonky. The behavior there will be undefined. So I guess we could either warn or err on it. I could debate on that, but we certainly should do something because the behavior is going to be undefined, and I can see us changing that behavior if we allowed it in the future. Um, so if we did that, then rollback boundary would be called subtransaction for lack of a better name. You define one if you want an MSI one, and then that subtransaction is in play until there is another subtransaction. I'm not, I'm not sure it makes sense to rename it because it's still going to be confusing. <laughs> like, should should we have them in pairs? Should we have begin and end? I mean, if if we do that, I'd rather it be parent child. You have a transaction, and then you put the packages underneath the transaction. Sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah, no, no, that's yeah. Tra uh, of course, that makes all pack packages <sighs> children of the chain or transaction. But yeah, I agree. But then the question is, what do you do with the default one in the chain? Do you start making people declare? Do we get rid of the implicit no. one? No, I don't no, think so. These are, these are sub-transactions. You have one implicitly in the chain. Because most people won't use it. Because most people don't care about rollback boundaries. Yeah. And also most people don't care about MSI transactions given yeah. its state. Yeah, uh, you, the, you have kind of implicit rollback boundaries and by marking package is permanent, right? You're like, this is not a framework. It's permanent. It's not mine. Right. You oh, don't, that's interesting. You don't do the work to declare, you know, sub transactions for that. You could, right? But you don't. You just mark them permanent. And there it's 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 an easier way of thinking. But it, and permanent has other knock on effects, like you won't right. uninstall it, which is your, yeah, that's the thing I want. So that ends up working out properly in the way that people just naturally use it. You put your permanent stuff, your prereqs, you put them all up here, you mark them all permanent because they're not yours, and then you put your stuff. And whether you want a transaction around all that stuff or not, um, you can decide. And given the interesting behavior of MSI transactions, not defaulting to it, I'm okay if we do not default to using MSI transactions. 
Uh, which Agreed. Is, which is where we're at now, which gives you, it was just the behavior we have now. I think that all works well now. And then when someone's like, okay, I want to opt in into the behavior of having an MSI transaction, then um, you declare one. Now, making the children, making the elements of, ch uh, the packages a child of that element, I am fine with but it's going to be nastier than you might think to implement. That's fair. You could treat, if you go back, if you go back to the checkpoint model, then you can have, you know, they wouldn't have to be parent child. Yeah. You know, right. You have just say begin transaction, mm -hmm. commit transaction. And those yeah. Are I just, those are actions. I, whatever. I mean, again, names are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, begin transaction is not bad. I just don't, um, I don't know if we want to have to match them in the flat list of chains. Well, let's see. So if you said begin mm -hmm. and then commit. Yeah, no, at that point, like Sean's right. I mean, you should be like a nested element. <laughs> this is, this, I'm fine with that. I'm, that's a I am, I'm pain. fine with, with, with having, you know, children of transactions. I was mostly saying if it you know, is a pain, then never mind. Now, one other thing that popped into my head is we could have MSI transactions have to be opt-in. We could put that on the chain and then try to auto-group MSI packages. And if there's you know MSI, 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 XE, MSI, MSI, we would have two MSI transactions there. We'd automatically commit the MSI transaction if it ran into an XE package or an MSU package or whatever. Well, we're just we're auto creating these sub, these transaction elements. Then. Yes, actually. that was so. The, and the reason it popped into my head is that that avoids the the creation of you know these new elements. You could stick with rollback boundary and say you want burn to automatically manage MSI transactions. That loses the flexibility if we add the transaction elements of being able to, you know, have fine-grained control over MSI transactions. Correct. I think that would just confuse people because they would want the whole thing in one transaction. Um, right, but that doesn't work. So we and do the next They complain that, they, that, that that's how they want it to work. I don't yeah. think that's a good idea. <laughs> the, cl the close issue button is right there. So, <laughs> no, I, I, I hear what Sean's saying, and I, I think I, I, yeah, I, 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 I think I, that's the reason not to put it on the chain. Because um, I knew I went there initially. I was like, why is this on the chain? And then as, as Sean described it more, I'm like, yeah, okay, I see why it's not on the chain. Um, you have to explicitly create these things. Um, and rollback boundary is the concept in Wix, historically, where you would put it. Um, so I understand why it was tagged there. And I think that rollback boundary is named poorly. Um, so then it's just a matter of how to think, how to name it, and whether we change its behavior to be, you have to nest the packages underneath it. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm 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 fine with it. I was more looking at the, you know, can we avoid the new elements if it's going to be an implementation hassle? Because to be honest, I think the the overall best solution is to introduce new elements and nest them, so we only have to come up with one name. Um, but I don't know if, you know, given given the the hassle here, I don't know that it's worth it. I'm also curious about the effect of trying to convert Wix three authoring to Wix four authoring if we do it this way. Well, there's no conversion because Wix three doesn't have um, these ideas. Has rollback trans boundary. It doesn't have MSI transactions, but it has oh, rollback. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sorry. You're right. Has rollback boundary. Um, is, is that straightforward? I mean, I wonder it... if I wonder if rollback boundary should stay as is. Yeah, I think it should just stay as is because most people don't use it. 
And so then, if you want to use it, you're just going to have to you're going to have to learn what that actually means. That's certainly true. I wonder if the MSI transaction, what's the attribute on rollback boundary called? Transaction equals true or false? Yes. Or yes, no. no. I see. Given the confusion, as we talked about the previous bug, it seems to me if we're talking about adding something for MSI transactions, we have an opportunity to clean up the confusion about rollback boundaries at the same time. So I think rollback boundaries aren't that bad. Vital rollback boundaries actually work just fine, right? It's like, stop here. It's, it's checkpoint, rollback boundary. It's the same thing, right? You get to this point, and then you stop. Yeah. Okay. So I non vital there's, there's is that, confusing. Yeah, non vital is weird. Um, just yeah. all out. But and and now I, I remember non vital must have come in for the Visual Studio Center as well, which is the here's the set of three packages that make a feature that if it fails, that's fine. You know, the, here's three MSI or you know, n MSIs, more than one, that make up a set of things. Put that in a boundary. If that fails, that's fine. Skip that feature. Continue on with the rest so that you can install the 300 packages and not have those three, um, and that optional feature just won't you know, be present on the machine. Um, that probably was, that, and that must have been where it came from. How um, is that not accomplished with package vital equals now? Because there's three of them that you have to roll back. That, there's three of them that act as a unit. So it's not just right, one of them. You have to end up with these three together. But doesn't a non-vital rollback boundary mean that you could end up with two of them? No, because you'd roll. But if if you ended up with two of them, and the third one failed. The first two would be rolled back, and then you'd skip over them and move on to the next one. Okay, so package vital equals yes or default. Rollback boundary vital equals no means roll back but continue. Yes. Yeah, that's not confusing. <laughs> <laughs> But isn't that a case where, where, you know, naming them transactions and nesting the packages would make it a lot more straightforward? Yes. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, I'll be honest, I had no idea this issue would cause this discussion. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure. That's what they always say. I don't remember discussing the rollback boundary getting the transaction equals yes on it, but that I, that's just my memory, too. Just, or I'm just behind on all the, the work being done in Burn, which is definitely true as well. I mean, so I'm, I'm... Nier did that like five and a half years ago. <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah. So we can't take Nier's stuff outright because uh, he he has a very focused solution. He's doing the area that he sees without the, uh, thinking through the implications of the impact on the language, which is this discussion we're having now. And I'm not being critical of Nier. He's just not that involved in the the higher level thinking of Wix, and he's always focused on what do I need to do to get my one particular problem solved. Well, this is All why right. we had Wix nights, and now we yeah. have these meetings. That's right, 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 right. So, um, yeah, so we have to be, this is the, can have to be careful about pulling features from people. All right, now I know how we got here. That makes sense to me. I can totally see how I would have missed that. All right, great. Um, I think, Sean, you're right. I think the answer is <laughs> this should be an element, and packages should be able to be sub-elements of it. Um, that, that. This just it makes everything work better. Mar making it vital, then you could say this set of sub packages clearly will be skipped if the transaction's non vital and it fails, right? You'll roll it back and then you'll skip it and continue on. And then you can name it. And then if you or you can declare an MSI transaction and then we can also say that if you have any non MSIs inside that transaction, that uh that's a little sketchy. Don't do that. And then in Bob's case where you have a uh, bunch of MSIs that you want in a transaction, 
and an XE, and then a bunch of other MSIs in the transaction. You create a transaction, you put your MSIs in it, and you can't put the XE in it because there's an error or a warning, whatever we choose to do there. So you pull that there's... XE out of the package, and then you have another transaction with a bunch of MSI packages, and it's clear again. You have chain, transaction, MSIs, XE, transaction, MSI package. You're like, well, yeah, clearly. And anybody that walked up and said, why don't you put the XE in that one sub-transaction, the answer is you can't because XEs are standalone things, and clearly they can't participate in a nested transaction where MSI has this feature that should you meet all of its requirements and everything work out right, you know, which you can validate, it's behavior that, hey, yeah, you can get multiple transactions across MSIs. And my fear of what's in the compiler shouldn't. Probably just shouldn't because the, the thing that I'm thinking about is that um, packages have um, – very flexible grouping mechanisms and sequencing um, work that goes on in them, which makes it really nice compared to some things in Wix that should have that grouping and ordering, um, but that ties everything back together. You can group groups of groups of groups, and then they all get ordered based off of how they get pulled back together, and it generally works the way you expect it to. The problem is that when you then want to nest those underneath two different things, whether a chain or another transaction, the the code isn't going to understand that, and it's going to be interesting. Which is why I would, I'm not sure we should allow the implicit transaction. But I don't think we want to be able to say that XE packages. I well, mean, the chain is the implicit transaction. I mean, it's it's basically a transaction without having to declare one. But yeah. And I don't think it fixes. It, it doesn't. That doesn't necessarily make the problem harder or easier. Um, the fact that there's another one on the outs that there's an implicit one to start with. Well, what are we going to do to prevent people from putting a transaction inside a transaction? Compiler error. Mm. Mm. So you can't. That's the challenge. You can't do it at compiler. No. Mm. Well, I take that. No, that should be okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, that won't be possible if you don't allow transactions inside package groups. Right. That just won't be pro which means you would have to declare all of your transactions at the chain level. Mm -hmm. um, that would be one way of solving it. Would say all transactions have to be declared at the chain level. I don't know how bad that is. I don't know how challenge. I mean, that's probably going to work in most cases because these are high level concepts. I'm trying to think of when would you want to be able to have a nested or, well, no, there would be, yeah, see, you're going to want to be able to say, hey, over in this fragment, please go put my transacted set of MSIs together. Blah. Which I guess you could just give them an ID and then ref them in. Yeah, yeah, so this is the challenge, right? If you want to break, if you want to be able to break all these things up and be able to put them in separate fragments, you have to be able to stitch it back together, and as you pointed out, yes, you want to make sure that they don't end up nested. The sub-element makes that more challenging. Where a the rollback boundary, as it is today, we cheat, you're able to stick it somewhere, and then the binder goes through and says, hey, everything between rollback boundary, you know, elements, <laughs> I will just auto-create the, you know, it creates the transactions for you. Yep, 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 yep. But the transaction element definitely is cleaner. All the evaluation has to be done at the binder, and all the parent grouping relationships have to be managed during the flattening process. 
I guess I thought that was the because we have the flattening issue already. I kind of assumed that would happen there and not. Yeah, the the tricky part horrible. is that yeah, the transaction. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe the transaction just becomes another group type. All right, let's think about it that way. So if the transaction becomes just another group type, like package group is a group type, and basically everywhere that package group is allowed, that transaction is allowed, and then the transaction information is stored as a separate symbol. So you'd create a grouping symbol of type transaction, of, of parent transaction. And then the transaction information we have to store will be a separate symbol, so that'd be fine. Okay, that solves that problem. Then it's really just going into grouping and flattening and making sure that transaction is allowed everywhere and then making sure that the parent of a transaction is never, well, there's never, yeah, that a transaction never ends up being a parent to, to another transaction, which probably, which may take a little bit of extra work but not that, that wouldn't be that bad. Maybe it's not horrible, it's, it's not simple, um, mostly because the grouping stuff is just simple as it is. Um, all right, well, do we agree that the sub-element is the best way to solve rollback boundaries and MSI transactions? Yes. Yeah. Like, if all things being equal, right? Mm. That that's ignoring best. implementation effort. Ignoring implementation effort, right? Which at some point you need to do, right? Because you're just like, all right, what's the right thing to do? And then we can talk about implementation effort. The right thing to do is to allow the tr to allow a transaction element and then to get rid of rollback boundary, and that will make it all explicit. Okay. Um, let me. I'll take an item because I'll probably go through it faster. Um, and it's going to be in some of the code I have to, I have another bug that's going to be in that area anyway. Um, let me take a, all right. Huh, okay. Let's leave a note on this item, Bob, that mm, says yeah. uh, that we're going to investigate the creation of a sub-transaction element or nested transaction element or maybe transaction element inside the chain. I'm not sure. I'm a little worried about calling it transaction because people might think they need to use it to get a transaction which maybe is, I just have to think about the implications of the name of it, but a, a name of a new element and that before the next meeting, I will have investigated the feasibility of implementing that element or the difficulty of implementing that element in the compiler linker kind of thing. And I will be back in two weeks or assuming that two weeks to, um, um, report back on what I find in that. How about I that? We, I think we might need a transaction group as well to be able yeah, to... Yeah, that, that's the, the... I want to avoid a transaction group, and it, I'm, I'm hoping we can we might be able to just do it as a package group, which is a little, little wacko, but a little bit... You're like, refer to the package group this, and you're like, when you get that package group, what did you get? Well, you got a transaction with five packages in it, right? So we don't have a transaction group... You just have a package group and then declare those set of packages in a transaction. I, I, I well, what I was thinking of was today you can have one package group, two packages, a rollback boundary in the middle, and two more packages. You won't be able to, if without a transaction group, you'll have to have two transaction refs to those two separate transactions. Say, I'm. Um, so you have a package group today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have two packages in the beginning, a rollback boundary in the middle, and then another two packages. Mm -hmm. So you have one package group, two transactions. Yep. If you don't have a transaction group, you can't link that in with one element anymore. Unless no, package uh, group supports transaction as in child. So you would write that as two package group, two pa one package group with two transaction in it with the nested MSI, uh, the nested packages as appropriate, as 
essentially the transaction element is allowed to live inside package group. Which I would, I, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> I think we should create a transaction group element if you want to have multiple transactions in one unit. What if you only want one transaction? You still put in a transaction group? Well, it's just like package package group. <laughs> oh, I guess we don't have a package ref today, do we? No. You always have to put it in a group, and then you ref it. Well, I don't know. I mean, why don't we have a template? Or we could have a transaction ref, right? I mean, it's probably it comes down to implementation where that's just harder to do. Like, yeah, why don't well, we have the package ref? Because we don't have a package ref because we don't have one package element. We have four different types, five different types, however many different types we have. And, and so you'd have to... It's unbounded. Yeah, it's... Mm, More no. like to grow. Well, yeah. So Sorry. You'd have bad. to have MSI package ref and XE package ref and things like that. And we just decided rather than having all those different refs, we just have package group ref. And if you want to have one MSI package to ref, put it in a package group and ref the group. Well, it'd be nicer if there was singular ones. <laughs> I don't know what the optimization. Yeah, it what it allows you to get rid of a group in the case that you want to break up your MSIs. What's the problem with having the transactions in a package group, though? The the worst yes, case I see. Well, right. Okay. So. So, I mean, what's the answer there? If you package group ref something with a transaction inside a transaction, is that something we disallow, or does it mean we just flatten it? Mm, no, you have to, I think you have to disallow it. Or Maybe. are you saying that one transaction can subsume the child transaction? Ooh. Well, no, I'm saying given that we can't have sub we can't have actual sub transactions what do we do i mean i think we should have a transaction group and a transaction and then you can have a transaction ref or a transaction group ref but that doesn't solve the problem of nested transactions well yeah it does cuz then you never have a transaction in a package group What if your transaction group ref is uh, sorry, I'm trying to flatten, visualize. You can't flatten then you don't get flattening of transaction groups. They can only be one level. So a transaction group cannot contain another transaction group ref. A transaction group cannot contain a transaction group ref in it. That's the important okay. part. Okay, so you just disallow it by language. Why? Or at why least... wouldn't you be able to? No, I guess you could have two different transaction groups within the transaction group, but they couldn't. A transaction can never have a transaction group ref. That's what right. it is. Or a transaction ref. Or a transaction ref. Yeah. Or a trans. Or. <sighs> Good lord. The thing I don't like about exposing transactions like this is that you end up having to know um, you end up having to know the structure of the thing that you're pulling in. So like let's take NetFX for example. NetFX is an XE and the way that you pull it in is you just say package group ref. NetFX the name of, you know, the identifier that is package group. And poof, you get NetFX. And you don't know whether there's one package or five packages or however many in there. And you don't have to care in the future, you wouldn't have to care also what transactions are in there. And that's that's nice as a consumer. You're just like, look, I want the package. I have a chain instead of packages. I want the NetFX transaction or the NetFX um, package to include in this chain. And the transactionality of it can be an implementation detail of NetFX. Well, but I'm not sure that was a good idea because... What if, 
what if you're trying to set up your transaction and you don't realize this package group you're pulling in is breaking up your transaction? Right. That's that's the problem. We have a we have a problem with. Oh, rollback boundary definitely has that problem today. Yes, absolutely. So, I'm not convinced that's a that getting rid of that possibility is a bad thing. Yeah, the trade-off is exposing that now you have to know. And if we change net effects, for example, to say, that, all right, we're going to change net effects and now we're going to wrap it with a transaction group um, or a transaction, then we change it to a transaction group and then everybody has to update their authoring to use transaction group to the net effects package instead of just the package group. That's the, Those are the things I'm a little bit worried about ongoing of maintaining it. Should the fact that you're using a transaction group inside, how exposed should that be to your language, knowing that there I mean, is the repercussions that, based on the decision you make in there, you could be breaking somebody else. You know, but that would have been a breaking change in itself. Adding breaking adding a new rollback boundary would have been a breaking change. How would it break? Because it would have, it could have split up the rollback boundaries that you wanted. It is possible that it could have. Yes, it could have been a breaking change depending on how you are using rollback boundaries. If they inserted a rollback boundary into theirs, yes, that's absolutely true. I mean, but it's not a language nothing... breaking change. That's sorry, that's that you, you, what I meant. You, it's, it's a, it's a behavior change. It's not a breaking code change. Yeah, it's a behavior breaking change. Could be. Yep. Yes. And Whether you, can you may not recognize it, right? Yes. You well, can that's... always expose a template and a package group as well. So let the user choose what they want. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. We could do both for everything. Although the <laughs> the transaction group could just have a package group ref. That would work, uh, right? would it? Like, I guess we we have to decide if that was allowed. Well, it has to be allowed, right? A transaction. No. You could say a transaction group can only have transactions in it. Sorry, transaction, transaction group. I, I'm still not entirely clear on why we want both of those, but because you want to group I, multiple, you want to group several things into a single transaction, but. Or into a single unit of consumption. So let's just bring back fragment ref. Uh, um, a little, I mean, but you know, groups are that, right? Groups are yeah, like I that. Know. They are kind of like, yeah, just ref a fragment. Yeah. Um, a transaction obviously can pull in, can have a package group ref. Transaction. Yeah. So, although at that point, I would probably say, why have both? A transaction group? Because without it, you there's things you could do in V3 that you can't do in V4. It takes more time <sighs> to do in V4. I mean, yeah, you can't force these two transaction groups to be one after the other. Yeah, all right. I suspect we spent way more time discussing this than Anybody the amount of time that anyone has actually used these concepts. <sighs> yeah. I don't want to ever come back to the design of it, though, if we can help it. So let me let me do the investigation into how creating another package group, how straightforward that can be, and then have a bit more concrete idea of how that could be implemented. And we will revisit this design discussion in two weeks then.
ten thirty. Good idea. We should move. It's a good on. idea. <laughs> and move on. Um, let's see if these are straightforward, real quick. Uh, build command still tries to run elevated or tries to run even. I don't know how I got elevated out of that. Even if it received unknown arguments. Uh, you can give this to me. There's a whole bunch of things around help that I haven't finished yet, so I'll take this one um, and do it in preview zero because this will be in that same thing. I just saw that code, so I was fixing other bugs. So I will take that uh, 6313 and put it in preview zero. Extracting bundles is not exposed in v4. Oh. Yeah, decompile should be able to do bundles. Why isn't it there? Okay. That's an oversight. That should be implemented. Well, there's decompiling and then there's unbinding. So the decompiling is not implemented. Yeah, this is dark being overloaded. Dark being overloaded. Well, well sorry. Bundles versus packages. Well, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean... It's, it, it was appropriate, but... but no, it, it, we discussed being able to... Um, decompile bundles and in the copious amount of times that's what we should have done in dart i mean it was argued right so i still think we should do with decompile a bundle it will in the end it will just decompose it until someone goes around and says yeah you know i've actually done the work to um decompile the source code so it's basically we decompiled it to something not all the way to source code but halfway there because we're lazy i mean that's really what the answer is or there are better things for us to work on if you don't like lazy. Yeah, that's such it. So that. I still think decompile is the correct place for this to live. The fact that it doesn't go all the way to source code is a someone who could open the feature and we'd put it out there and be like, yeah, we'd take it if someone implemented all this, and then we're done. Okay. So I, I don't know why it wasn't in decompile. I kind of like maybe expected it to just get hooked up, and it probably just, you know, just like I need to finish wiring this in. Um, I'll take it if nobody else wants it because I thought it already worked. If someone else wants to take it, this is a great one for someone else to take instead of me only because I have a lot of things. Um, and I don't think this has any special knowledge other than going and wiring it all together. Well, it used to go through the unbinder, and now nothing goes through the unbinder right now. So I don't really know which direction you were trying to go. Yes, it goes through the unbinder. The un but they're still unbinding. It's just yeah, implementation. Nothing calls it. Oh, oh, oh. I think the unbinder itself is probably going away as a central concept because it's now been split into things that... Because the unbinding is completely different for bundles than it is for MSIs, for example. Isn't that a back-end? Yeah, it's Did a back you? Sorry. And then Bob finished the thought for me. It's a back-end implementation detail, so it's like the back-end needs to just do the right thing. And the correct back-end needs to be called based off the input. But right now, Wix decompile will call the MSI unbinder. Yes, yeah, deep down in it, it ends up calling the thing that was what the unbinder is. Yes. At least I think it does. I haven't looked yeah. at it closely. All right. Sounds like I could take this, and I will try to go figure out how to rewire that in and why it wasn't, but yes, that dark is gone. Wix de decompile replaces it. It should work on bundles. The fact that it doesn't is something that needs to be finished in four. So go do that. Um, so we're not fixing this in dark, but the decompile should handle this case. Yeah, it should not crash. We should not crash on this. If a bundle does not have its attached container, then we should not crash. It may be just error because there's going to be not. You're not going to be able to wait. What can we pull off of it? This there's a crash. Well, no, notice my comment. Oh, it's the attached container. That's fine. This this should have just basically said, you know, there should have been a, me a warning message or something that said, hey, your attached container that we expected to find is not here. Right. Here's everything else. Have a nice day. Right. And it shouldn't crash though. It shouldn't but, crash. I agree. But it's yeah. not a real use case. Uh, well, I don't. There's know. nothing. Yeah. It, well, I mean. Uh, there's no, there's nothing to extract other than the UX container, right? Which has which, all the manifest information in it. Which that has, which you have if you've installed the bundle. So mm. just go to the original source. 
or Again, I agree it shouldn't crash, yeah. but I don't think this is like a, you know, oh my God, stop shit. Oh yeah, no, no. But this should be a simple if statement kind of thing, or catch this and then continue on with less of life. Assuming yeah. we're not taking this in three, no. Do you want this as part no. of your four work? Sure, we'll toss it in four, and I will take a look at it as I go by that space as well. Since you're already in that space yes. from the previous bug, right? Um, not really. <laughs> Uh, we'll see. If, we'll see if it's close. It'll be in the unbinding area in the decompiling. Um, um, package compressed in V4. I changed it to true, which was I thought what we discussed. Um, Did we? Yeah. Yeah, because everybody compresses all their stuff. I don't disagree. I don't remember us actually talking about it. Which I, then I had this conversation in my head, which has happened in the past, but that's not yeah, generally yeah. a good thing. Um, voices in your head is not. No, voices in your head are fine. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, I, we should def. We need to finish this, and if nobody else is going to take it, I will take it because this is a huge thing, and it keeps it bites me every time I create a new package, and it bugs me. So. Okay. I, I, right thing. I personally agree. Um, it, it's it's a proper default. Um, does that affect now? <laughs> next step. Should we therefore embed cabs automatically? No, that is not the the way to do it in burn. But no, that outside that's... of burn, it's pretty common. No, that's on the media temp. I mean. Well, that's a decision we'd make on the media template. This is package well, yeah. compressed. So I hear what you're saying, and that we can debate that. Let's debate that one separately. Okay. <laughs> right now, my intent is I'd say, nah, let's just keep them separate. <laughs> let's, let's not. And then we could debate the let's make media template and bend them by default. We could debate that. Okay. That one I have a harder time because people need, yeah, I don't know. Because <sighs> it uses disk space. Which is yeah no no it, again it's absolutely the wrong thing for bundles, but it's absolutely the wrong arguably thing. the right thing for it's arguably the right thing for MSIs. I think for creating calves for MSIs is what everybody does. Whether you embed the cab or not has higher level consequences that we should be aware of. That's I, guess, I absolutely that. agree, but I'm betting that unless you're bundling them, you almost always include the cab in the MSI. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Single file download. Okay. Big thing. Yes. Yeah. No, you're right. I hear you. All right. Um, sorry. Who's who wants to take this one? I mean, I'll, I'll take it. Great. That's. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, burn ads. All right. Do we want to try to cover these two, or do you want to save them for next week, Sean? Your call. You know how deep uh, they're going to the, go. The burn one should be fast. Okay. Burn ads ignored command line argument for each reboot. That sounds bad. Yeah, but I oh, thought gosh. that was all fixed. Yeah, I'm, I think I fixed it. I asked years and years ago, has anyone seen this? <laughs> come on, six years. We yeah, should wait for This is from Visual Studio. They're never going to come back and actually tell you what they did. So. so, yeah, probably could close this as fixed. <laughs> Resolve this as fixed. I have no argument. And yeah, it's let's not gonna, close it. <laughs> okay, that's great. Burn does not pass restart flags to related bundles. This is a discussion, isn't it? Yeah. You've gotten somewhere on this, I assume, Sean? Yeah. The. I mean, you made a fix a long time ago so that related bundles will not restart. Yeah. But... So basically, it boils down to he wants all EXE packages with the protocol of burn. He wants burn to automatically add the no restart flag to the command line. For anything marked burn. So it's for anything with a burn protocol. Now, the yeah. problem is, Sean, you make the assertion that is burn protocol is only intended for progress, but I can tell you it's overloaded. There are definitely instances where we assume if protocol is burned, it's a bundle. 
I would say those are bugs. I agree with your the the wording of intended. The intention should be that it's only for progress, but I there are definitely instances where we look at the protocol to determine whether we should treat it like a bundle. And and if you're passing burn protocol to an XE package, then just add the no restart switches. And yeah, I agree. So that's that. And then, and I agree that if we have bundle package, then we should make that do all the have nice syntactic sugar for all the good things for bundles. So, yeah, I'm I'm with you on on that. Yeah, yeah. No burn. You know, overriding protocol burn to set restart only is not the right thing. Oh, so we can close this one too, I guess. Yes. I, this is what I say. I love Nier. He works really hard. He gets into some really nice edge cases and he really pushes the edges of some things. But I've not, he's not always able to back all the way back out and then come back at the whole thing from the bottom. He's always, he's usually very focused on his particular area that he's looking at there. And so that's why you have to be careful about just taking his stuff, which you have done appropriately here and pushing back. So I agree with all that. And what Bob said about protocol burn should not be overused for these things. And the restart for um, related packages, it feels like a trade-off we made um, somewhere along the line. I forget where that basically said this is a, the lesser of two evils kinds of things. Um, in fact, so the, it's old. Like you said, it was a change that was made a long time ago, and it was in relation to something. So, into relation into an issue that we're facing. Anyway, I agree with this. This can be closed. With, yes. Um, yeah. I'm not logged in. All right. All right. Hey, look, we made it through triage. <laughs> wow. And who's and here I was thinking that this was gonna be quiet. Um anything else people want to talk about? Um after all triage stuff going on. Um uh, I have been fixing bugs on Wix four, which is a fantastic feeling. Um and just working my way through all the ones that are assigned to me, which there are plenty. <laughs> Um, so I guess we will keep doing this. All right. Well, given no questions or comments, as I fill space here, I think we'll be back in two weeks. That would be January 21, according to my calendar. So uh, we'll do this again with more information on well, on what we have in bugs and more progress on Wix 4. Sound good, guys? Works for me. Yeah. All right. Two weeks. We'll be back on more status of and more bugs fixed in Wix 4. Until then, everybody take it easy. Uh, we'll see you January 21st. Bye. Bye. Bye.